Hi everyone, today is Monday, July the 11th, 2022, and we have an awesome new interview for you. So I got the chance to talk to Bob Bradley. He is awesome, awesome guy, and he has a company called the Public Relations and Marketing, and it was so awesome talking to him because we talked about music, bands, and so much more. So check it out right now. Um, can you tell me, um, like a little about yourself? Yeah, of course. Um, well, my name is Bob Bradley. I've been, um, I'm so used to the podcast thing. So is this part being recorded? Or yeah, is this... yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, hey, we're recording then. We'll uh, wing it there. Uh, my name is Bob Bradley, and I've been working in uh, PR marketing for almost 15 years now. And I got my start working in PR um, through the music industry on the flip side. I used to be a touring artist in a, in a band on Victory Records that had a lot of really cool bands back in the day, like Taking Back Sunday and A Day to Remember. And so I got my, uh, my start being a musician, touring, being on the road, meeting lots of people in the industry, meeting managers, booking agents, having a publicist, you know, at the label. So I, I always had an excitement about marketing and just how a band can be put together and how they can market themselves, you know, from a grassroots level. So that really carried into me becoming a professional, quote unquote, on the, the marketing PR side, which started with me once I stopped touring working at different labels, different companies on the, the marketing PR side and led to me having my own company, Bradley Public Relations and Marketing, which uh, I operate now. And uh, yeah, I'm based out of Southern California and live here, work here, but work with clients, you know, in different genres of music and even other industries um, all around the country. So how did you get to do, like, how did you start your business? Um kind of started um it wasn't like this intentional like i want to start my own pr business and go on my own it, it, i kind of fell into it in multiple ways it seems like my my entire life is just kind of been going on you know <laughs> the gut instinct of like hey let's try this this is where i'm meant to go and when i was working for other people or other companies other startups um we were always that small like nimble kind of company So we were always getting creative and I got to know a lot of people. And when it came, I don't even remember how I left the last, you know, job I was at doing the PR thing. It just kind of, you know, life flows into into this next phase and people just wanted to work with me. And I started getting clients and, you know, in the very beginning, it was very low pay, some just helping friends out, but it started, uh, I started building this reputation, right? In the network, you you kind of expand and people are like, yeah, call Bob. You know, he knows how to help do this PR thing that, you know, is very, it's you either know how PR works or you have no clue. I and, oh. <laughs> right? Yeah. People are just yeah. like, they think they see like some huge band uh, or, you know, Kanye West or any genre of music. They see things talked about like Machine Kelly. Great example. That PR machine at work right there. And it's amazing. Love or hate the guy. Like, that is a PR machine, him and his team in full force, spreading the word on what it is that he's up to. He's a grand example because there's so much to work with, but PR is that behind the scenes force of doing those press releases and sending those messages to the media in any format, a blog, a podcast, a magazine, a newspaper, the the daily news, like that's the communication source on behalf of the client. So, um, for me as a business, I just kept ramping up and getting better at what I do. It's always a work in progress. You know, you do all the behind the scenes, you know, whether you're a corporation or you're a do it yourself, just like a self-employed kind of thing, or you have assistance, you know, I've, I've gone through different formats of my business throughout the years, but the, the work has never changed. It's like, I help clients get featured in the media. And a lot of that has been in music. So, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to shift away from t- telling you about how I got into the business or how the business works versus how does PR work. So hopefully that answers your question. Well, 
Yeah, yeah, it did answer it. Um, I, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, I don't know anything really about PR. That, and I did read, I did read, um, listen to the book that you, um, your new book, or about the music and the. Oh yeah, public P- relations for yeah. Uh, musicians. Yeah. I almost forgot what it was called. I'm like, which one was it? Uh, oh yeah. 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 Uh, Is it, you have more than one book? Yeah, I have another one called Public Relations for Small Business. It's it's essentially a version of that, but more broad. For like, if you run a if you run a donut shop or you have a tech company or you have an app, so it's, it's a little bit more easy to digest. Because if somebody that's not a, a band or a DJ or a rapper is like, I want to learn how to do PR, and they see this book that's for music, they're just going to be like, well, on to the next. So this one is for them. It's for everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I hope that you. I mean, thank you for reading the book, by the way. For well, I got, I got, mostly uh, got through a couple episodes, but um, I mean, oh, it's it's it's, it's it's very long. <laughs> hey, thank you, thank you. Uh, just, there's a, there's the audible version of the book, but there's also the podcast. Ye- I, I basically made ten episodes of that are just bite sized portions of the book, right? Um, there's a, in life, you know, there's always many ways you could say the same thing, right? So the podcast yeah, is just, yeah. Kind of, <laughs> but, um, you know, PR, public relations is somebody, a communications expert, talking to the media about something, right? And yeah. the agenda is to get coverage. So um, whether it's you trying to spread the word on your podcast, it's like yeah. one, one cool thing you'll see, like my buddy Eddie has uh, a podcast, you know, it's a rock and roll beer guy but it's like he's he started with guests that you've never heard of and all of a sudden he's having like mastodon you know on his podcast and all of a sudden they'll say something on the episode and all these other media blogs pick up the news from that episode you know that's pr as well that's organic it's not like anybody was trying to spread the word but it's like the more that anybody does something you can gain organic pr because you're just constantly putting content into the world versus when people hire me or they hire a PR firm or if a label has a publicist in house, they're intentionally putting out press releases or calling people or putting out an email saying like, Hey, this band's about to hit the road on tour. Here are the dates. Here's the information. Can you talk about it? You know what I mean? Yeah. And some, sometimes one big site like Loudwire or whatever, if you're into metal or whatever, they post something and all the other sites that are just under their size of popularity might pick up the news from them. So, um, sometimes the work is done for you when you get a big enough win, which is pretty cool. Well, I'm more and more excited to uh, read more about the book. (laughs) Sounds very interesting. Yeah. And I I think that it's really, it's for those that, because there's different chapters in that book. If you want to talk about the book that if you're curious about that one, part of PR, you can go to the, you know, the contents and just read that chapter. It's like, it's all good. But if there's a lot of people out there, the reason I wrote the book is that there's so many bands out there, including when I first started my band when I was like 18 or 19. So I've been doing this for over 20 years now where like I had like a few bucks in my bank account, but I had a lot of ambition and I didn't know what to read. I didn't know, I really, really didn't even know what PR was at the time. I knew how to make flyers and hand out CDs and talk to people. But yeah. that's all kind of part of the, the marketing thing, right? Yeah, and totally. Bands today are way more hip on PR than they were 20 years ago. So that's that's just a straight up fact. <laughs> and a lot of bands know what they want. So this book is for those bands where like, I need PR, but I have no friggin' idea how to do it. You know, this is like a little starter guide them so because i mean the rabbit hole goes so deep right there's so many strategies yeah and there's so many different ways and approaches and so that it's not like a one size fits all um way of work it's what works for you what what works for an artist that doesn't have a budget versus hey on this single i want to do my own pr but i'm saving up and i want to hire a big firm for my release and i have a lot of clients like that it's, you know some of them will work with me for the full length and then that I because they actually put, got my book or I sent them a free copy as a thank you it's like I want my clients and I want my friends to understand how this works because then they're going to be more educated and they're going to be happier 
because they know what they're doing. They understand how it works. Yeah. It's like, I remember when I first, you know, was touring on Victory and I had my manager and sometimes I was a little confused. I'm like, what does the manager do versus what do they not do? Right. Yeah. And it works, it works like that for PR. It works like that for a, a merch company. It's like, what, what do these people do versus what do they not do? And where can I go elsewhere to find those things? Cause it's like in this world of music now, it's, it's not, I need a record deal and that's it. It's like a lot of bands just a la carte their career. Yeah. They and do it I independently. A lot of friends that do that. Right. You know, yeah. So, I mean, you, I'm preaching to the choir here, you know, you know exactly how this works. Y- yeah. Artists. Yeah, I been I started my podcast, well, my radio show in college, and then I kind of did some other stuff around, like I uh, booked bands in Kansas City for a while, like benefit concerts. Um, That's cool. That's all part of the 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 industry cog, right? Where it's like yeah. all these different things are so critical. It's like I don't know anything about radio. I don't know anything about booking. I mean, I know a little bit about booking shows, but it's like, that's yeah. your world. Man. It's, it's, like... <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. It's like, try to find the bands is hard. The hard part. But yeah, there's a lot of bands, but it's like the right fit. I'm sure is hard, hard to find or the right talent that's willing to work hard. But- I would say good. I would say booking um, benefit concerts are much easier than booking a a large show. Um, but I mean, it's still fun. I got a lot of people to get together. Like I had photographers that donated their time for the event, so I mean, that was yeah, kind of that's cool. A- that's a completely different, you know, if you're booking like local bands or a national touring up, but if you're booking a benefit concert or something for charity, it's like that. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of extra work. It's a yeah. Lot of different, Do, uh, doing it by yourself. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I did a PR for March of Dimes a few years in a row out here. Just, uh, more of a, you know, it's a nonprofit, you know, they're helping out, um, uh, women that are uh, dealing with uh, pregnancy challenges and things like that and but they have to raise money right and that charity fundraiser requires donation of time and whether it's a, a celebrity chef or somebody donating food or people they need to attract people that can make donations it's like that's so much work compared to like let's get some cool bands together <laughs> and just throw our show and sell tickets so uh, I, I completely feel you and I, I'm sure that it's just a lot of work, but you learn a lot through that as well. Yeah. It's like, if you can do that, you can do anything. You can, <laughs> you can book any kind of show and it'll, it'll be like a walk in the park. And it's like, you start with the hard stuff and then work your way backwards. Right. Yeah. Like what kind of bands did you, um, if, if you can remember what kind of bands you played back in the day, Oh, like when I was touring? Yeah. Or when I was doing... Uh, well, I, was, I come from the metal and hardcore scene. So that's... I mean, that's very broad now. But back back in the day, it's like... Um, you know, bands like Hatebreed would be considered like a hardcore band. Or like a metalcore band would be like Kill Such a Gage. Um, and then you have all these other bands that are in between. Like Norma Jean and Under Oath. And you have like screamo bands. and But my band, Scars Tomorrow we were kind of a, a hybrid of a lot of different genres. So we would tour with a lot of different bands in the, in the heavy <laughs> genres, but it's like, you go to the shows and it's all the same, you know, kind of audience, right? It's like whether yeah. they're into emo or they're screamo or hardcore. It's like all kind of the same club. It's all the same interests. And I mean, we toured with a lot of the, the big heavy hitters back then. And uh, we, uh, had a lot of fun doing it. It was a lot of work. There was certain years where I was gone 250 days a year. And, you know, I didn't do that forever. <laughs> it's just, it, it takes a, a special kind of personality to tour for the long haul. And I mean, as a lot of bands get older, they start to just be very careful about, 
you know, how, how long they're gone. They'd rather do two months a year that are, you know, special tours than just be in the road, you know, 250 days a year. It's like, whew, it gets expensive. <laughs> but um, I think it's, you know, the touring is essential for a musician that wants to make a living doing it. It's like, unless you're, you know, a singer songwriter making money with film and television placements, or you're, you happen to get famous on Bandcamp or SoundCloud, it's like, you're going to make most of your money with live touring and merchandising. You know, you're not going to make a ton on streaming. So. I mean, I do music on the side. It would say that (laughs) like spoken word. Um, that's cool. I just do it for fun, you know, not nothing big or anything. I make a little money, but not, not that much. <laughs> just from the street. Better than nothing. Yeah. Better than nothing. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that opens your, your range to a different type of audience, you know, and it's, you could be playing, you know, cafes or small venues or opening up for other kind of you know, indie artists that appreciate what you do, you know? Yeah. I'm not any metal shows. I, you know, I'm just being real. <laughs> <laughs> well, like when you did, you do any like um, like those very popular um, festivals that they had back in the day. I, yeah, like a uh, like Warp Tour, yeah, Hellfest, and a lot of festivals just throughout the country that I only heard of because we played it, and then I never of it ever again because <laughs> i mean i think I mean, they kind of they yeah. they didn't really the last time i heard about were how you say it um um but the last time i heard it they they didn't do any more shows or or didn't do any more um festivals anymore i don't know people just didn't want to do it anymore i don't know they uh well the work tour came to an end and 2019 or something like that i think right before covid hit um they did like they just decided to end it and then i think the year after or somewhere right after that they did one big last hurrah but i mean it it hasn't existed since then but there's so many other festivals that um are local to that region but i don't think there's a lot of big touring festivals that i know of um for that genre of music, you know, for like the alternative lifestyle, metal and rock and stuff like that. Um, somebody out there wants to start one. <laughs> that get get a lot of money. Come on. Get a lot of insurance. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. That would be kind of fun. Doing something and I'll like do the that. PR. Come on. Let's do it. <laughs> um, so what kind of um thing like what kind of people do you um book or um pr for um i would say i mean mostly on the music side it's a lot of bands that are in the rock genre so it could be i've, I've had recently like indie rock bands i've had uh, metal bands uh post hardcore bands so it's Stuff that usually has a guitar, <laughs> but it, everything under the sun, you know, as far as, you know, female fronted pop acts with cool, you know, pop flavor mainstream, but somehow I think it, there's a guitar in there somewhere. So I'd say rock music, rock and pop, indie, um, because when you're doing PR, you have to have your list of contacts, right? Yeah. And if you're doing like a DJ, that might be a different kind of website altogether versus somebody who does indie rock versus somebody who does hard rock and metal. And you can only do so much so well before you're just spread too thin and you're just kind of a, an average (laughs) PR person. Um, so I've kind of stayed in my lane and, um, done a lot of rock centric kind of artists for my clients. And I also do, uh, I have other kinds of clients outside of music as well, but, you know, it all it's all the same kind of strategy right it's like you're trying to figure out what that person's story is what makes their music special um who did they work with to make the record you know have they had pr before are they going on tour you gotta dig in with these clients and figure out what the angle is and then you get to work 
writing a press release, writing a pitch, reaching out to all these different sites. And even then, there's no guarantee. It's like, <laughs> it's like sales, essentially. And your job is to sell your client to the press. And the reward, the payment, besides the client paying you, is getting these features. And so it's having great relationships with these sites. And when these sites hear from you, when they get a message from Bob or one of my assistants, they, they're going to expect something. They're not going to expect something far out left field. They're going to expect probably a rock kind of band. And it's my job to explain what kind of artist this is, what makes them special. And then we work together on scheduling interviews or scheduling, um, you know, a review, you know, send them a vinyl. And it's a lot of work. It's a lot of back end work that the client will probably never see until the feature is live or unless they're setting up an interview like we're doing right now. And so it's that part is kind of the project management aspect of PR. It's, it's handling all this stuff that, yeah, I think a lot of people can learn how to do it rather easily, but it's like building that database of doing all the work. It's like artists just don't have time for that. They want to delegate that to someone else who does that for a living. And that's why, I mean, historically labels have had, you know, this bulked up staff of like people that do all these different things. But as we were talking about earlier, as time goes on, people have left those systems and created their own niche companies that specialize in merchandising and PR and radio. Um, and these bands know that like, Hey, I can pick and choose and spend my own money and then not, you know, have my, uh, my music belong to a label where I may never see a check ever again. I might not see my record ever again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the mass, the master belongs to them or the publishing belongs to them. Now the artists can keep their material and just create their own label experience for as long as they need and kind of test that water themselves to see if it's meant to work or if they need to go back in the studio and make another record and another one instead of being quote unquote married to this label, if they can even get a deal. And I mean, I don't want to say be stuck, but you know, it's a risk, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's a risk worth, worth the check that you might get up front. And, um, I don't know. I don't know if that's always the answer anymore. Well, I did hear about Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift have this issue as well, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, I think with her album was owned by Scooter Braun, right? Maybe yeah, just yeah. Bieber and and yeah. but there's a price to pay. It's like that. Her career was built off of these other people investing in her, but then it gets to a point where it's like her value is so massive that the deal doesn't look as good anymore in retrospect. So I, I don't know what deals she had. You know, I heard about that and I know that she re-recorded some of her stuff and it was yeah. sticky and left a bad taste in her mouth. And, but I mean, there's other artists that I'm sure that love the guy and be like, yeah, that guy, you know, made my career and without him, I would have nothing. And totally. so it's like that fine line, you know, but I, <laughs> we've all, <laughs> Anybody listening that's in a band has seen that movie or knows somebody. They're like, yeah, I loved being on that label, and now I hate them. Oh. And it's like, how do we not repeat that anymore? How do we change the system where artists can escape when it's no longer, you know, uh, serving them, you know, so they can move on to something that might make them happier, you know, or might make them money? Yeah. I saw that on your website. Um, I was... Google, like just search it on it and i noticed you you do food as well like oh yeah i, I love food i'm hungry right now <laughs> um, well i do um i do i have a cookie business on the side <laughs> there you go that's awesome yeah tell me about it um i started my, uh my my cookie business when I was in college because a lot of students needed cookies on campus so I just kind of made cookies every day mostly and then um I also and then I just made a website and then got that up and running and then mostly people would come to my apartment and ask me, oh, can you make me cookies? Or I would make them cookies so they can take it to the 
the um, library on those nights that needed they needed something to chomp on when doing their tests. So I did that. Uh, I did a, uh, made cookies for, um, I, well, I got paid for doing the cookies for $300 oh, no. for like $3,000 or something. Oh, so I had to like, business right there. yeah. So I just had like, I had to stay in my apartment making the cookies for like three, three, um, in the weekend. Like through Sunday through Monday or something. That sounds like a business, man. That's like that. I mean, it sounds like you're a hero to a lot of people too. Yeah, because just giving out free cookies to everybody on campus. Um, but I uh, did, but I did get good. Um, but that was a good opportunity. Um, yeah, and to talk PR, it's like what is, your story is that you know, campus student creates viable cookie business. And then all of a sudden the campus newspaper, the local newspaper does an article on you and has a picture of you holding your cookies. That's the PR thing, right? Yeah. Is that, and all of a sudden people read that and they're like, I want a friggin' cookie right now. Call oh, Daniel, what's up? And then the business gets an uptick because they read your story about, but that's unique, right? It's like, yeah. usually I just read about sports or some band but it's like a cookie business that's awesome on campus you know yeah and so yeah that's awesome i, think that's I mean cool. i i i guess I'm, I'm a very i do everything i guess i mean i do music i have a cookie business i have a podcast or two um just doing stuff that i love what, you, what instrument do you play um well my my voice you're a spoken word artist. You're yeah. An artiste. Yeah. I mean, I used to. I mean, I used to play guitar, but I just, it's just, I don't even take it out really. What What you need once you hit a certain milestone with your cookies is a custom guitar, and the graphic on the guitar is cookies. So, like, when they walk into your place, they walk into your cookie shop, they see your guitar, and it's a cookie guitar. You know, like cookie designs on it. And they're like, what's up with that? You know, and then you yeah. tell the story. Well, that's, <laughs> that, that would be kind of cool. They have a guitar that was designed that had all my logos on there or something. I don't know, of cookies. I think you should do it. I think you should do it. My friend yeah. has a sushi guitar. I'm just telling you. And he has like one with macaroni and cheese on it. And it's just all graphics, but I think it's pretty cool. That's kind of cool. So, I'll stick with normal guitar for myself, but, you know. Well, I mean, you can hang that up as a decoration. That's, that's exactly the point. It's a talking point. It's like, oh, we'll look at that. Um, so, like, uh, there's another thing, question that I've had. So, like, so how do you get a PR? Besides, like, if you wanted to, like, do you find more bands for the podcast or something because it's very uh, hard trying to find bands besides doing everything on your own oh you mean how do you find clients yeah or... clients uh, honestly i i think at one point when i was really ramping things up i was going through my own network and just thinking of bands that I knew or that I liked, and I just started reaching out to them and telling them about what I did and creating a pipeline, like a business pipeline. And then as they started talking to me, some of them would say, no thanks, or you're too expensive, or like, yeah, let's work together in six months. And I would just keep track of all this stuff and it started building. Um, and when I lived in LA, you know, before I had kids, <laughs> I went out all the time and I go to music industry events and shows and I just basically talk myself up to people, you know, I'd be like, Hey, how are you? But I'm Bob. And, and I'd ask them questions about them and then they'd be like, well, what do you do? And I'm like, glad you asked. I do PR and people just started to know me as the PR guy, you know? Um, yeah. so a lot of it's just like, as you do it a long time, people come to you and that's like the dream scenario because you're not, you're not the sales guy anymore. It's like they come to you 
So it's, it's not like I have the power, but it's like there I'm already vetted. You know, somebody recommended me to them. So it's like we already know each other. So there's trust. It's not like, well, uh, you say you do PR, you know, prove it or send me these send me information. It's just like that shit never works out, man. Like it's just <laughs> it's always kind of awkward. And I mean, I get it. If it's like a huge label, it's like, yeah, I'm going to put together a big case study presentation and show this label why they should trust me. But for the most part, most people are a la carte, you know, bands that were recommended that they call me and then we talk about it and then we work together and we kill it and we do a good job and everyone's happy. And then they go and tell someone else. And I mean, just like your cookies, man, yeah. we're talking and they're just like, you gotta call Daniel. We need some cookies. <laughs> Well, if but, you ever I mean, need, you if you somewhere. ever, if you ever need cookies, you can always call me. <laughs> you got a FedEx though, man. Yeah, I do. I do. I, I mean, I do every, I mean, I ship from the East Coast to wherever you are. Well, I'm not out of, so, not out of the country, but you know, I haven't gotten there well, yet. Yeah, yeah, really. Have to put the, I mean, how would you ship? There was this, there was this cookie brand from New York. And it's like a couple of nurses that made them and they're pretty big. I forget what they're called, but I would order them and they arrive just fine. I don't think it was in oh, ice it, or anything. They're, they're is it, made. is it, so I think it's just, Oh, is it milk? No, I've heard of that though. I've heard of that. Those cookies are, cold. those are good. I'm sure they're really good. I haven't uh, tasted them, but they sound good. Yeah, and it's like you could definitely ramp up your business by doing, you know, Instagram, you know, hyper targeting regions where it's easy for you to ship your cookies, and you just like run Instagram feed um, and story advertisements about your cookies, and then you run it like at night when people are hungry and they want dessert. It's like I want that, and all of a sudden, boom, 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 your PayPal is just filling up with orders, you know? Yeah. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you best know I'm going to go get some cookies later, right? So yeah. You, you've planted the seeds. You, uh, i got to get myself some cookies after this. So, um, But yeah, I mean, hopefully the whole PR thing makes sense to everyone listening to you. Um, I know it's not, quote unquote, for everyone. It's like not everyone has to understand how it works. But there's a lot of people that hear that buzzword and... They deserve to know at least like the basics about it, <laughs> and yeah, and that's why the book the book exists as well. So it's like they listen to our podcast together, and maybe they buy the book, and then maybe they do their own PR or they hire somebody, and then they buy your cookies, and everybody wins. Yeah, I might want a PR sometime someday. That would be amazing. Yeah, I know somebody. I know somebody that does PR, so you're all good. Well, that's you. I know. Uh, or there's always people that are like regional. It's like if you want to do something that's just your your area, it's like you want to find somebody that knows your county or your state, like the back of their hand, you know, versus a lot of my clients have been from California. So it's like, yeah, I know everybody in Southern California that does, that writes for all the different publications, right? You yeah, I know everybody around the entire country. It's just, I mean, they have databases for it, like Scission and Muckrack. And, but, yeah, it's like there's specialists, just like real estate, right? You're not going to hire a real estate agent from another state if you're trying to find a house in your neighborhood. You want to hire somebody that knows your neighborhood. So. Did you ever, when you, when you had a band back in the day, did you ever do, like, co-writing? Um... I mean, it was metal, like, um, mostly. mostly it was, it was more just like spoken idea. <laughs> you know, our guitar player, Carlos and Scars Tomorrow wrote most of the music and I'd write all the bass and then our other guitar player would chime in. He wrote a couple of the songs on each album, but it's like, we, we were in a, we were in a rehearsal place together. So it's co-writing amongst the band members, but we didn't do outside co-writing. Um, the only time we almost did was with uh, Stefan from Deftones. He was going to um, pro not produce, but uh, 
do pre-production for our second album on Victory, but then things happened with touring and all that, and we couldn't do it. But he was probably going to, you know, help co-write and rewrite some of our parts. But that would have been amazing. I'm still sad about that, but that was like 15 years ago. <laughs> um, but a lot of bands now, oh, yeah, there's so many bands that co-write with other people. And there's, you know, I, a lot of bands in rock. It's like they're having people write stuff for them. Because you just you get to a certain point where you run out of ideas. <laughs> totally. Like, throw, throw something my way, you know? <laughs> I mean, I have a friend in Nashville that I talk to a lot. She's a um, singer, songwriter, musician, pianist. She, she does, like, the co-writing. She does mostly everything. But she's independent. So everything she does is amazing. Um, and then I have a friend that worked with me that lives in Reno. Um, and he just helps me with the music parts for the for my music. But we're close friends from college, so it's kind of nice that he nice. does my the part of the music part and I do the lyrics. So okay. uh, that's cool. I like that. Kind of, and it's more fun that it's more fun that way, right? Yeah, and yourself. I mean, just doing it by myself, and um, then I just put it out to the world, and everybody hears it. I put it, so nobody takes up my music. I mean, <laughs> he does the music part, but we all work together, and everything comes out great because he does all that magic stuff that I can't do. Yeah it's, yeah, it's, I mean, you can learn, yeah, you know, how to play it, but some people just got it, man. They got the magic, right? They yeah. Got the, the secret sauce, and I'm just like, you know what? You do your thing, I'm just going to contribute where I can. That's, but everything you know, he so does cool. is amazing, and all the songs come out great, so. That's cool. You got to send me some of your material when, uh, when we get off this call or this weekend or soon. Oh, I will. I totally will. Or not, if you're keeping it to yourself, it's all Well, good. you know, it's uh, plastered everywhere, so. <laughs> plastered everywhere. That's, the, that's, the, that's where you get the, the kick out of it. It's like most musicians and artists do it because they want validation that, like, hey, your art's really cool or your music's really cool. And if you can make some money off of it, great, you know. Um, but I don't know a lot of people who are like, man, I just really want to get rich. I'm going to start a band. <laughs> well, I, I don't think I've ever heard that before. Well, I wouldn't say a band. I kind of wanted a band one time in my life, but then I said, well, maybe I should just do it independently. And I do want to get my music on like TV shows or just independent um, games or something. I don't know. Something. I just want my yeah. music heard and just. And it does tell a story. So, I mean. Mostly I write music about my life and then sometimes I work, write about people that are really personal to me, like friends and family or just random songs that come in my head and I start writing. Yeah, it's like things that are personal. It's like some people are, you know, they don't want to write about that, but most people write about, you know, personal struggle or relationships or family yeah um, things like that so and then that's it, I, yeah it's like that's part of the pr thing it's like what is your music about you know is there something that's you know you see a lot of articles where it's like xyz artists you know um, talks struggle or mental health or um family or loss of somebody close to them and it's like that's the angle and then people it's like whatever it takes to get people to listen to your music right yeah um, and then, then people connect with you because of that, because they can relate. You know, I think more pe people are more alike than different. And a lot of artists think like, well, do you need me to like this? And it's like, well, tell them what it's about. And then you're going to increase the likelihood that someone's going to connect with you and listen to your music. So uh, even if it's not even their favorite genre of music, it's like, I think there's always a way to make something relatable. Um, yeah. Um, but, I did write a song about the one issue that's, still a part like I have an issue that a health issue that's happened to me and, I, and I'm dealing with it so I'm living with it I live I'm in the wheelchair and that's 
that's like my leg just went out of me. So I mean, I mean, I was not born with it, but I mean, I did write a song about it, and it's really it's a good song, but um, but it's out there. So hopefully, it would maybe help somebody else out. So that's why I write it. Wrote it. I mean, that's that's exactly the the right way. You know, there's if it bothers somebody enough, it's like you get therapy or whatever. But it's like you know, to talk about something that is a like a trial and tribulation or something that's challenging. It's like yeah, talk about it in your own creative way. Express yourself because you don't want to keep that stuff to yourself. You know, that's not yeah. Fun. Um, you want it at the end of the day, people just want to be heard and they want to be understood and whether they're having a bad day or they have a disability or, um, well, I mean, yeah, that's true. I do have a disability. So, I mean, that's also the issue. And then, but I mean, I, I live with it. I mean, no, but everybody has a disability. Mostly people have disabilities, but I mean. You live with it. I, dude, we, we all have something, and it's like as time goes on, like my son has autism. And it's like as he gets older, he's going to have to, I have to raise him in a way that like, hey, it's okay, and you're unique, and you're amazing, and don't let the world hold you down kind of stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like feel yeah. such engaged lyrics or something. Yeah. yeah. And for me, it's like I got anxiety, and I've had depression, and I've had ADHD issues and it's just like but it's we got to normalize this stuff where it's like it's okay to not be okay and to have challenges and to have support from people instead of hiding it you know what I mean yeah so it's like if anything people when you tell people about the stuff that you're going through and I a lot of this is PR too it's like people are like you're letting down barriers you know because everyone especially with social media it's like everyone just shows like how perfect their life is. And it's just like, that's not how life works, man. Yeah. And that's, it's being, I love it because I mean, there's a lot of weird stuff going on in the world, but it's also people are becoming more vulnerable, you know, men and women and people are just opening up and they're just like, Hey, this is me. This is what I'm dealing with. And then obviously through music, that's a way to express it. So, yeah. Well, I'm just happy. Tie it back together. PR covers that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, I found out. Well, over Father's Day weekend, I got my song played a couple of times on, on the on different podcasts in Kansas City. I was very happy. Um, so that's. I mean, it's good to get your music out there and people hearing it and they liking it. So that was kind of nice. That's amazing. I, I bet it felt good, right? Yeah, totally. Good feeling, yeah. And that's all that matters. Yeah. That's, that's a win right there. Yeah. Everything else is just a byproduct. So, um, well, cool. Well, I, I think this has been an awesome interview today. I think uh, I had a lot of fun talking to you. Well, I had fun talking to you, too. Um, anything? Uh, do the listeners have any questions? Oh, wait, it's not out yet. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, was just, that was a joke. Um, sometimes some of these are like, you know, live when people are. Yeah, I kind of would love. And... I mean, I would. What's a good? Do you have any like good podcasts? Um, stream like places I could stream this like, like in the in the future. What could I like? I don't know. How to explain this, but. Is there a different podcast out there that stream? I mean, I don't even know how to stream it outside of, besides of like Apple Music or whatever. But. Yeah, it's, I forgot what it's called. I used it for my my own podcast, and I already forgot what it's called. It's not Reverb, but it's um, it's just a, a digital aggregator. You know, you just put it on there, and it'll put it on Spotify. It'll put it on. I'm, I'm kind of used to it, but not that much. But it's very new to me. I mean, everybody That's says they uh, love it, but... Email me after this, and I'll look up where I'm hosting my podcast. And it show, it gives you metrics. It'll show you how many people listen to the episode. And I can send that to you. Hopefully okay. Well, I'll let you... I will... When this is over, I'll um, mostly add some things out. But then I will post this up on mon- Monday. Okay. Sounds good to me, Daniel.
Okay. <laughs> uh, sounds like a plan. And yeah, if anybody listening has any questions, you can uh, connect with me on social media at publicity, B R A D L E Y, publicity, P U V L I C I T Y dot com. And hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for listening. And yeah, that, that's my closing words. I've done a lot of these before. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Thank you so much for have, um, talking to me. And um, of course, I will uh, keep you post. Well, I'll send you all the information um, that we talked about. And, um, and I'll talk to you later. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> You're welcome. And uh, thanks for listening, everybody. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you again.